Hello. When you said that you would wait for me in Canis, I did not expect you to wait for me on the actual quayside. No, 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 I, I jest. But, but here we are, and this is a lucky happenstance, for I have but this moment disembarked from my high full of van plates and spear shafts for the King's triumph. That's right. I did it. I did not think it was possible, but with God's grace, I achieved it. When last we saw each other, I, I, I was embarking upon my catch, I leapt aboard, we sailed across the narrow seas with the wind and tide behind us, I jumped off almost straight onto a hackney and rode pell-mell for Canterbury and Rochester and Gravesend and London, and when I reached London there was the high with its van plates and spear shafts coming back out of London, so I almost jumped off the horse and onto the high and sailed back out along the Thames and, and out into the estuary and across the German Sea and the narrow seas and well, here I am, here I am. And Rafe and Dickon and, and Hans are unlading the cargo and making sure that it is stored properly in the storehouse and we are done. Well, not quite, not quite done, but this is the penultimate chapter before the, the final chapter of the Book of the King's Triumph. And so we are in celebratory mood, Mo weary, but celebratory. And I am therefore to hold a feast uh, to which Rafe and Dickon and Hans will come, but you must come too. No, I insist. You must come and feast with us, for you have been as much part of this party as any he, and I am grateful for it. So I insist you come and you dine with us at the Staple Inn. Come, come this way. I expect it's only natural for men in our line of work to bend their minds at this time to, to what will happen next. After all, for the, for the king and the queen and the court and the many scores of knights who are assembling as we speak, I have no doubt, at Dover to make their embarkation and sail across the narrow sea to be in Calais well, today or two from, from now, for them, this is but a beginning, but for us, in the Office of Revels, or the Office of the King's Works, or in the Armoury, this has been many, many months, years, in the preparation, and in fact, we are nearing the end. All that remains for us to do, by God's grace, is to deliver the King the triumph that he wishes. And by God's grace, we will. But it is natural, I think, perhaps, for, for, for me to start thinking on tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. Mercifully, it is no business of mine to consider the wheel of the country as a whole. I only need to consider the wheel of the armory. After all, the king, to him falls that, that burden. Not alone, he has his cardinal and he has his privy council and those long-headed men, well, they must ponder upon the legacy of this great triumph and what it will achieve. The king, after all, has achieved a great deal in the, what, 10 years or so he has been upon the throne. He has made war, he is making a peace, but he has not made a firm foundation to his dynasty. After all, he had a son. I remember that very well. One of the first and by a considerable margin the most lavish of tournaments that we organised on behalf of the King it was within a t year or two of his coming to the throne and it was to celebrate the birth of his son by Queen Catherine. Henry was his name, we called him the New Year's Prince for he was born at New Year's and in the, the middle of February of the Year of Grace 1511 it must have been, we organised a tournament at Westminster for the King and the King rode and the King tilted and a, and a grand affair it was. And ten days later, the poor babe had been taken under the bosom of, of God. So the king hath no son. Well, he hath no son by the queen, uh, at least. But rumour has it that there is a, a bonny, bouncing, red-headed boy that is born to another. But of course this is, this is gossip and, and, and tittle-tattle. In fact, it is not wise to talk of the king and the king's future, for in some quarters that might be considered to be treason, so uh, 
So let us concentrate rather on a more immediate and pressing future uh, that concerns us. <laughs> that is to say, tomorrow, as in the actual tomorrow, when we must rise early from our beds and make our way to Gein. So I suggest we drink up uh, and we eat up and uh, we repair to our beds post haste in order that we rise with uh, healthy minds in healthy bodies. <laughs> Dull, dull, dull thy ale, dull, dull thine ale. <laughs> oh. <coughs> this has been an evening to remember, my friend, and I am grateful to you for it. My thanks, my thanks, heartfelt. For who, who will remember this? I mean, I mean, people will remember in the years to come that the names of the great and the good, they will remember, they will remember King, King Henry and, and, and King Francis. They, they will remember Thomas Woolsey, no doubt, and they will remember the Emperor Charles. All those names, they will be recollected by those who come after, but, but not our names, not our names. Even I don't know the names of those whom we will hire in their dozens in order to put the finishing touches to the tilt yard. At the very last moment, no doubt. I always say that if, you, if you're not if you're not nailing in the tilt rail at one end while the first knight is lining his horse up at the other end, then it's, then it's not a proper tournament. <laughs> um, but I don't know their names. I don't know the names of the night watchmen. We'll need them. We'll have to pay for candles, pounds and pounds of candles, in order that they may survey all the camp to make sure that the locals don't come in and pick up things by which to recollect this extraordinary event that is the King's Triumph. I don't know, I don't know who they are, so, so how, how will those who come after rem remember their names, hmm? But you'll, you'll remember. I hope, at least we are not. You'll remember the names of Rafe Brand and Richard Cutler and Richard Pelland, likewise. And of course, Hans, you'll remember his name, I have no doubt. Hans, come, come over here, come, come over here. Huh. Now, my, my friend, I, I think that he, he was beginning to believe you did not exist, if you can credit that. Tell him, tell him, what do you think about all of this?